I'm with Maria Jamari from Ward 9. How are you today? Just fine, thank you so much. And we're at the second annual Work It event. Um, so what brings you here today? Uh, women, <laughs> basically. Um, women in the community, women of color in the community. I mean, it's a, it's a hard struggle for, struggle for women as it is. I mean, when you add the, the color component in there, it's, uh, and you add that racial element, it's uh, a super challenge. I mean, we face challenges all the time. And I remember what it was like for me in my community, the Italian community, 25 years ago when I was uh, first elected. And it was tough. Uh, there were no role models. Uh, there were no people that you could turn to for uh, assistance and for um, guidance. And groups such as this and events such as this uh, put you right in the thick of it. And you can uh, look to other women, especially women within your own community, and see and hear their own experiences and feel what it was like for them. And hopefully with each generation it'll get better and better. So being a woman in a political climate, why is it important that this type of representation is here at an event like this? It's, it's so important. You have issues that men could never dream of, of tackling. You have childcare issues. Uh, you have issues of uh, spousal support. Uh, you have issues, not to say that men don't have their own issues, don't get me wrong, and I know I'm generalizing, but everyone knows women are harder hit uh, with, with these particular uh, challenges. Women need to bond uh, more than we do. We need to relate to one another more than we do. Uh, we need to get out there, out of the house, into uh, organizations and associations and clubs more than we do. Um, we need this bonding because we need to be part of the fabric that grows on society. We need to be part of the message. We can't just sit home and receive messages. We need to be part of giving a message out. The message has to be one of positive change. And for all of us who have daughters, it's especially um, important to communicate that uh, you can do anything you want. You should not be uh, encased in some sort of cell that people make for you or that you make for yourself and not reaching out of it. You have to communicate to, to daughters and sons that times have changed and a woman can grow to be anything she wants. On that note, is there anything you're looking forward to uh, work its launch? Um, I'm looking forward to its growth on an annual basis and I'm looking forward to the networks that women so often did not form in the past but now are starting to see that politics is networking that's where it's at that's what needs to be expanded if we're to grow um, I was helped in the political process by many many men there weren't women at the time and I vowed to change that um, in my office for example we're all women um, and I make it a point to try to mentor as many young women as I can. We have job shadowing programs, uh, we have internships, and hopefully people who want to start can start to volunteer for counselors, MPPs, MPs, and get into the political arena that way. Okay, so I'm with the FYI team. Hi ladies, how you doing? Hi, I'm Lindsay. I'm the Youth Community Engagement Coordinator. And I'm Eve. I'm the Female Specific Program Coordinator. Tell us a little bit about FYI and specifically women involvement. Okay, well Eve could tell you that. She's running our Female Specific Program. Well, definitely right now, um, one of the uh, most amazing programs we have is called Ladies First, where the girls from George Harvey Collegiate, which is located right beside FYI, which is at 1652 Keel Street, well done. Um, <laughs> they gather together and we just have social discussions about issues relevant to young women. Um, and we're also um, in the works to start a program called Sister Scripture, which is a book and film club for um, that focuses on literature that is specific to ethnic women. So um, we're really happy about the programs that we're starting and uh, really looking Looking forward to having more and more young women come and join. And what's your experience working with young women in the Keel and Eglinton area? Um, or in the FYI catchment area? Okay. Um, right now, a lot of the women I work with is from 121 Humber, which is just down the road from FYI. And as the community engagement stream, we kind of engage them to, you know, whole events that's, you know, pro-social and definitely more inclusive of women. We find like a lot of times our events are mostly focused on the men and the basketball and things like that. So at, at uh, the leadership program, we just currently meet with them. Most majority of them are women, but we still have men come because it's very open. But um, right now, 
now we just work on like you know revamping their images you know writing their bios getting their profiles done trying to find ways that this summer that we can submit grants and get them employed so that a lot of the women can actually help out the community like they don't they already help out but now we want them to actually get paid for it so right. yeah nice. <laughs> so why is it important that there is you know women-led or women-focused programming um, I feel yeah <laughs> I feel it's really important because I feel like women are very strong in our community and if they're offered a voice they well not even offered a voice they're offered a venue where they can use their voice they can say so much empowering words that can just reach the masses I find a lot of times in the work I do a lot of the times when I'm in group the guys will do things just to get the women's attention mm -hmm. so I feel like if you like change the mentality of the women so that the guys want to do like different things to get their attention it would make the whole community a lot better so that's why I find when we're working with women it's very good to like make sure that their self-image is strong, make sure that their morals are strong, make sure they keep themselves in a high standard so that guys are forced to treat them with high standards. All right, yeah. same. That's big. So yourself, uh, why is it important for women-led uh, programming or uh, exclusive women's spaces? Well, um, Lindsay answered it so well, but I mean, I think what could be left to be said is that um, it's so important for um, us older women in the community to empower the younger women, to give them the resources to enable them to be able to conduct themselves in ways that are, are able to define them um, strength with strength with empower empowerment and it's so important um, to catch them at that young age you know before they move into the older adulthood and hopefully um, to be able to to help them to grow and to succeed and let them know that there are older women out there who care and we're open and available all the time. So I'm with one of the organizers for Work It. Uh, what's your name and your position? I'm Jackie Porter. I'm actually the public relations coordinator awesome. for Work It. All right. So let's start up with the event. How do you feel about the event so far? You know, I'm, I'm really excited. It's just gratifying to see a bunch of women, positive, all positive vibes, all working together for something so special. Of course, of course. Now, if somebody didn't know about Work It, what was the vision, what was the reason, what was the, the, uh, the push to start something like Work It? Work It was actually started by Natasha Burford. She's here. Um, she's quite pregnant right now, so she's wanting to sit down and relax, and I understand. Um, she really, she lives in the neighborhood, and she was really touched by a lot of the violence that was happening in the community. She's a teacher, and she, she wanted to do something to inspire change, especially in young people. As a teacher, she's dealing a lot with young people, and what she really wanted to show that there was a lot of positive things going on in the community. And so her vision was, let's get young people involved in taking action against the violence happening in the community. Let's get them empowered. Let's teach them skills so that they can take on leadership roles in the community and have, really create the, the, the community that they want to see. So correct me, am I wrong? When we speak about young people, we're talking about women focus. Young women. Young women is definitely a focus. All right. Um, certainly we're a little biased being women, is, being women ourselves. But yeah, we really, um, it, for me, Natasha really inspired me to get involved. She's a very positive, very hardworking person and she really wanted to do more for young women in the Jane and Finch community to, to feel empowered, to teach them skills that make you feel empowered. So education is a big part of it. It's a big part of her life, big part of my life. And we, she really feels that you know, education is a tool for empowerment. And that's what this conference is all about. So why is it important that there are women-led pieces and you know, uh, women's focus or spaces? Um, why, is, why is that important? The reality is, in our society, even in 2009, women are still marginalized. And if you, you start to add on being a, a woman of color, um, a woman of color um, who might not be necessarily in the best financial situation, I mean, there's a lot of us in the Jane and Finch community that are still striving. And so, you know, if you, if you put all that together, you put, you know, socioeconomics on top of, you know, being a minority, there's a lot of room for women who might not feel like they can really take on any leadership roles, might not feel like, oh, you know, I'm good enough to, to be in a position to change, to, to actually inspire change. And if, if there's one thing that we should have learned from 2008, 2009, is one person can lead a movement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so beautiful. Um, so to wrap up, what are some of uh, the initiatives that we should look out for moving ahead? Well, there's there's a few things that you know we're really, really, really excited about. One of them is 
the young young women's leadership camp that we do. And um, th that's the inspired, I don't know if you've seen some of the inspired uh, leaders that are here, mm -hmm. the young leaders that are here. We're really trying to teach them s skills to help them learn things like funding, getting funding from the government, advocacy. Um, we really want to teach them skills that they can empower themselves mm -hmm. and empower other young women. Mm -hmm. So that's really, you know, one of our passions. That's one of our big goals is to do that. And the other part of it is just to educate people in the community so that they know we're here. Um, another part of, you know, what we really wanted to see happen, especially for this conference, were for all of these uh, organizations in the Jane Finch community to start working together, to start building. Mm -hmm. uh, because as the more we know about each other, the more we have opportunities where we can actually work together and build something even better bigger and bigger and stronger. All right, so let's try to hook some people, the Jane Finch community, in. There is a, a full day conference tomorrow on Saturday. Exactly. That's the education piece. So that's the this education. Is a celebration piece, okay. Right? So let's let's. What are some? I saw some of the lectures and some of the pieces. I think they're really amazing topics. But let's uh, let's give some insight to people that are going to be checking in okay. later on tonight. All right. There's there's a lot going on. There's a. I'm doing actually a financial talk, which is I'm a I'm a financial planner. I'm a certified financial planner. So finance 101 is near and dear to my heart. Um, there's also also a nutrition um, piece, teaching people, a lot of people don't know what they're eating, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and find out, unfortunately, you know, when it's too late, when we're already packing on the pounds, and so it, there's a nutrition piece, uh, there's a really powerful video I saw last year on women in HIV in Ontario, um, that was put out by Women's Health and Women's Hands, fascinating, mm -hmm. and I really, really recommend, absolutely yeah. they do, so I absolutely recommend that you check that out. Um, there's another person doing Courageous Conversations, uh, there's a lot of hard things that as women um, you know even in relationships with our children with our partner it's hard to talk about yeah. so there's a piece teaching you how to t have those kinds of courageous conversations wow. with loved ones That's big. Uh, so there's a lot of really exciting things happening there's a also a multimedia course teaching uh, teaching young people teaching the community how they can use media to empower themselves to use it to, in to basically incite change there's a lot of really cool things happening awesome. tomorrow so feel free to check it out. And Sunday is the Mothers and Youth oh, Brunch? Sunday is all about pampering. Okay. All about pampering our women. Okay. Uh, because, you know, sometimes as mothers in particular, we don't really find time to look after ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's one of the things of being a woman. We always sort of put ourselves last. So Sunday is all about empowering women by making them feel good about themselves you know, pampering them. We have a, actually a spa, a spa day brunch, which uh, means if you sign up, you can actually get your hair done, your nails done, your feet done, a photo shoot with your mother. We're going to play some mother and daughter games, see how much you really know about your kids, okay. see how much these kids know about their mothers. It's going to be really exciting. All right.